In the first video of step number seven, I taught you guys how I made a tool to help throw the dice. Let's now go more into detail on why it's important to use this tool to train yourself to throw the dice appropriately. Hey, my name is Joe and this is my Craps Master Dice Shooting Journey. Let's make it yours as well. Your goal should be to easily and smoothly launch the dice into orbit and throw it to the other end of the table. But what exactly does that mean? How, how should we go about doing that? Well, let me tell you this. This is what I'm doing. And this is what I have uncovered. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you secure the dice in a proper dice grip and that you're using a desired and a proven dice set. And then next you want to throw or launch the dice. And I'm going to give you some guidelines in the rest of this video on how to do that. The first thing you want to kind of consider is how much of a backspin do you need and why do you need a backspin? Well, a backspin is basically a way to ensure that the dice stick together and that they'll spin uniformly down the table, assuming that you throw them and release them square to the back wall and straight down the table and that they leave the fingers, your fingers at exactly the same time. Now, the reason that we want to have a proper backspin on the dice is that when it spins backwards, it allows the dice to spin together and to stay together as they fly down towards the other side of the table. You want to make sure that the backspin is not too fast, but there also is a spin and it's going fast enough. Kind of a rule of thumb is the closer you are to the back wall, the slower the backspin should be. But the further away you get from the back wall, the faster the backspin should be. So when you're practicing, try different rates of backspin and see what works best for you. So that way when the dice land, they're together, but they also have the least amount of energy built up in the dice to help minimize that, that randomness at the end. And we'll get a little bit more into that in just a second here. Next, you wanna try to achieve the perfect arc when you're throwing the dice. Now, in theory, what you should do is when you release the dice, they should be coming out of your hand at a 45 degree angle upward. It's gonna meet that max point or that apex, and then it's gonna come down on a 45 degree angle and land in your landing zone area. And again, the landing zone area will be a topic of a future video, but let's talk about what we've done so far. So, so far we've released the dice. They should be synchronized, meaning that they're spinning at the same rate, both dice and they're spinning backwards and they're going up at a 45 degree angle, coming down on a 45 degree angle towards your landing zone. And the reason that this angle or the 45 degrees up and down is so important is that that is the angle at which the dice have the least amount of stored energy in it. So, the reason that's important is because if you have very little stored energy in the dice when they hit the table, the thought is, the hope is that there's going to be less volatility once the dice bounce off the table and they bounce into the back wall. So basically what's happening is they're coming, they're hitting, bouncing up, hitting the back wall, and then slowly just coming down to rest, hopefully on axis right up next to the back wall. Now I'm showing you guys this chart as a reference guide. Um, this is something that I found, I believe at the PAR shooting group. I'm not exactly sure where I'll try to find the reference to it and, and put a reference in my description. Uh, but basically the chart is saying that, you know, you have anywhere between four to 16 feet away from the back wall is where you could throw it. And it obviously depends on your table length. I have a 12 foot table. So, you know, I'm trying to shoot from stick left too. My first video, I showed you that I'm shooting from nine feet away, but on the chart, it starts off at four feet and your apex or your height of your throw should be at one foot from the table surface. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to adjust the height of your throw according to where you are standing at the table and how far away from the table you're standing. Remember that every foot that you stand away from that back wall, you're going to be increasing the height of your throw three inches. So in my video that I just put out the introduction to this step at nine feet, I was at two feet and three inches high is what my target throwing distance was. Now, 
The tool that I made, and I'll show a picture right here, has two strings across. And what I did is I put it at the top string three inches above my target. So I went at two feet and six inches for that top string. That's from the table surface. And then I also went three inches below my target. So I had the bottom string at two feet from the table surface. So that way, hopefully I'm going in between the strings and I'm getting the proper height. So that way when they come down and land, it's gonna have very little stored energy. Now, if you want, and it's hard to throw your, your dice between the two strings, just use one string and put it exactly where you need to be. So my nine foot area was at two feet, three inches. So I'll put the string right at that and I'll just throw, so it just clears the string. Now, what I found is when I'm using this tool, it was kind of hard to focus on that landing zone. So using that tool, all we're really doing is we are looking for finding the proper height. So we're trying to train our body, give our body a memory, if you will, to know where to release the dice, how high they should fly. And after you start getting comfortable on that, you can take the tool away and start practicing freestyle and start focusing on that landing zone. Now that tool that I made, what I did is I positioned the center of the base of the tool at the halfway mark between my shooting position and the back wall, but then I added on three inches to account for a, a landing zone, if you will. Now, everybody says that your landing zone should be six inches approximately away from the back wall. We'll get more into that into detail in a future video, but I have a slightly different approach on it, so hopefully you guys tune in to that video and find out where I'm coming from. But for purposes of this tool, let's set it up at the halfway point plus three inches at the middle of that base. So that way you get the appropriate midpoint of your throw so the dice, like I said, go up and then come back down appropriately. Now, like I said, your goal is to get the dice to land into your landing zone area or where you want them to land at the, at the table. But when you're releasing them, make sure that they're perpendicular to the back wall. So in other words, they're square up to the back wall. So that way when they hit the back wall, they're gonna bounce off straight. If you come in at an angle, what's gonna happen is it's gonna bounce a different direction. That's why I was watching a video from Mudslide Mac and he talked about using a laser level light. So if you look at a picture right now, I have a picture of that laser level light and it shows that it's shining on the back wall so that way I know where that straight line is. When we're using our height throwing tool, it's gonna be hard to, to judge that, that distance or that the landing zone, if you will. So having that laser light there will actually help you determine where the dice should land, where it is in a straight line, so that way you can verify if you are actually following through like you're intending to do so. The other thing you wanna do is listen to the sound of the dice. In other words, what I mean is when they land on the th table, you should hear a thump when they hit the table. And, and you'll know what I mean when you hear it. And what that's telling you is if you hear that thump, that means that the dice are landing flat. They're not landing on edge. The other thing you wanna do is watch the reaction of the dice. So when they land flat and they bounce up against the table and then they come back down, do they land right next to the table or do they kind of come up cornerwise, hit a corner and then they fly off? And if they do fly off, that's gonna tell you certain things about your throw. And we'll get into analyzing your throw at a later date and things you could do to alter your, your release and your throw and your distance and your landing zone, all that type of stuff, um, depending on how the dice are landing and working. But at this point in your journey, make sure that you watch how the dice react so we can make adjustments in the future to help you become more consistent in your throwing patterns. So like we were saying is our goal is to throw the dice so that way they bounce off the table into the back wall and they come off gently and lightly so that way they come to die or they come to rest right next to the wall as close as possible. And the reason that's important is so that way it doesn't start bouncing all around, it doesn't start randomizing the dice and it also keeps you away from the player's chips and the tables. Because if you hit those chips, that's gonna help randomize or, or it's gonna throw your dice off of, of axis as well.
So hopefully this video here has given you a bit more detail on why I created that tool, how it works, you know, using the marks that we put on the dowels so you can see how high you need to be. And remember that for every foot on the table, starting at four feet, you should be at one foot throwing height. Every foot you go back, you're gonna add three inches to that one foot mark. So if you're at five feet from the back wall, you're gonna go at one foot three inches. If you're at six feet, you're gonna go at one foot six inches because we add three inches to the to the number. So that's an easy way to remember when you're standing at the table. But now when you're practicing, make sure you measure out the halfway point, make sure you make that tool, make sure you use it. And once you start feeling comfortable, put it aside guys and just practice on muscle memory. And then once you start practicing more, bring it out occasionally, double check to make sure you're getting a proper height and you're gonna know over time what looks right, what feels right, where you should be releasing the dice and how it's gonna work best for you. If you're liking these videos, if you're finding any value, make sure you give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to my channel. I'm not just short of a thousand subscribers, Click on the right side there. That'll bring you to a video that I did to my Dice Influence, Dice Control, Dice Shooting introduction for this series. Hey, my name is Joe and this is my Craftsmaster Dice Shooting journey. Let's make it yours as well.